thing today is that uh, you brought a Bible. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, I like this Bible. Yes, sir. I started out with this Bible. I still have, well, not this one. I've wore out a few over the years. I hated to give them up, but when, you know, the Bible talks about when you take away from the word, well, pages were falling out of my Bible, so, you know, I didn't really want to do that. So, how many is going to say this with me today? I can have everything this Bible says I can have. Now think about that for a moment. Why in the world would you not want everything the Bible says? Thank you very much. Sir. I mean, it talks about healing and deliverance and prosperity yes. and eternal life. Right. Yeah. How many thinks that's good? Yeah. Well, you can have it. That's the good news today. Yes. Say this, I can be, I can be. Everything, everything this Bible says I can be. Says I can. Now think about that. A lot of people say what they think you are. I was number one the other day. So anyway, I'm just saying that God has got some amazing plans for your life. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the finisher of your faith. And then say this, I can do, I can do. everything this Bible says I can do. So why are you going to argue with yourself about that? It says you can put your hand to something and God will prosper it. All right. Well, I could do that. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. I'll lay hands on the sick if I believe yeah. and they will recover. Well, I can do that. Why? Because God said you can. Yes. Today, here, 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 here's this phrase. I hope that I make it clear again today. This is my second attempt at endeavoring to explain this. I think about 12,000 times I have led people in that confession and then I said, my prayer for you today is that you let this word, yeah, let this word. Become, life become life in your life. Amen. That verse is loaded. Yep. Let, yep. permit, allow the word, not any word, the word. Yeah. Become, it's a kind of a process become life, the God kind of life, Zoe, the God kind of life, in your, your life, yeah. your everyday life, not just Sunday, right, right. in your life, it's called lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's ready to hear something today that's going to help you understand that. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Here we go. The foundation message is let the word become life in your life. It's not a catchphrase that I sat down and tried to figure out. God spoke it to me before I knew I had a ministry. A lot of people sit down and try to get a tagline or a, you know, a good uh, slogan or whatever for their ministry. I want you to know this, this phrase came straight from God. I didn't try to figure it out. I'm glad I didn't try to figure it out because this thing has lasted 40 years and it's just as relevant today as it was back then. It, it is an eternal God who says eternal words. Amen? All right, we found out that there were three aspects to faith. I don't want us to forget that. Um, this, is, this is huge. Nothing is going to happen just because we think about it. So f the word does not become life in our life if it does not go through this three process or these three steps. Yeah. The first one is the word of faith. That's, that's found in uh, Romans 10, 17, Romans 10, 8. Faith comes by hearing. No matter what you hear, you'll believe it. Yeah. But real hearing comes from hearing and understanding the word of God. Yeah. So that's called the message. Everybody uh, say a message. a message. You hear something and you believe it. The second step, though, is the law of faith. Now, the law of faith is found in Romans 3.27, the law of faith. It's, it, this is a legal document. Yes. 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 You can have eternal life because legally Jesus Christ paid for your sin. Yes. 
This whole thing is a legal thing. God's a legal thing. He's a just God. He's not going to do anything outside the law. The law of gravity is an excellent thing to have in operation. The laws of seed time and harvest. There's, there's a lot of law, and, and it's so sad that preachers want to do away with the law, thinking that Jesus did away with the law. No, please don't, because Jesus fulfilled the law and gave me the opportunity to be born again. That's a legal right. The law of faith is simply the application of the word that we've heard. We have to do something with what we've heard. And then the final one is the spirit of faith. And, and that's the lifestyle. You're, you're in the spirit of it. You're caught up in the spirit of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it's just, it just turns into a lifestyle. Now, <clears throat> this seems to be like a process. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. A couple of days ago, it's like the Lord said to me, do you, do you see a bill there? That is, those three steps are saved, being saved, and will be saved. Yeah. Yeah. I have said that many times. You know, we're saved. Why? Well, we heard that we need a Savior. It's a word of faith. We know we need a deliverer. We, we know we should go to church. You go to church, that's, a, that's, that's safe. Do you know church today is a safer place than the bar? Yes. Or a prison? Yes. Or slippery roads, for that matter. All right. The law of faith is being saved. In other words, we start applying what we believe. We start doing it. Uh, Nate started talking about, you know, I, I got saved and then I, well, you know, I found out about tithing. So then I became a tither. I started applying that. And then it was like, well, now I don't have to think about it if I'm going to do it or not anymore. It's just I've applied it and I realize, well, there's too many benefits not to do it. I mean, this thing works. God really is a good God. He said, try me. Prove me. Bring your tithe into the store. I'll pour out windows, uh, the windows of heaven. I'll pour out blessings. Then we find out that what God said was true. It's a legal thing. If I tithe, it's a legal thing. You're going to be blessed. So we're being saved. Then we start thinking, well, maybe I'll try some of the other things he says. Right? Right? Well, what about this Sabbath thing? Well, I don't know. I don't believe in that Sabbath thing anymore. You don't believe in resting once a week? Right. See, yeah, I don't know where you heard some stupidity, you know? Like even Forrest Gump said his mama said, stupid is as stupid does or whatever, you know? I grew up with, you know, I load 16 tons. I work eight days a week. And I'm thinking, oh, that's stupid. Okay, well, what's, what's so bad about taking a, a Friday evening at sundown and spending a half an hour listening to the Torah teaching and having communion with your family and, 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 and thinking about God and looking back at your week and say, well, you know, we did good this week. Or saying we didn't do so good this week, so Lord help us next week. And then all of a sudden you start figuring out this Sabbath thing. Hey, that God, God is smart. That is really good, God. I wish I'd have thought of that. You never would have. That's why I told you, remember. Remember the Sabbath. And so then all of a sudden we're being saved. Now we got our our money is being saved. Now we got our Friday once a week saved. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So I got my Sunday morning saved. I understand we're being saved. Then we find out about healing. And then we don't live at the doctor's office. We don't live at the pharmacy. We don't live. All of a sudden I'm getting my body saved. I go on that overnight diet and supernatural weight loss with changing pounds to kilograms. And, you know, we're, we're being saved. How many, how, how many is here is being saved? Yes. Amen. Are you saved more than you were last year? I would hope so. I would hope that there's some things that, wow, God's a good God. I, I think I'll check out more of him. 
I mean, things just enjoy the journey. Yeah. All right. And then the spirit of faith is being saved. Now, he, here's, here's the thing for some of you ones that desire strong meat. This is really being saved where this is now a lifestyle. Yes. It, it's no longer just Sunday morning. It's no longer just, okay, I'm, I'm doing that 10% thing. It shifts over into, a great missionary friend of mine used to say, he says, I used to give to live, meaning to say give and it'll be given, press down, shake it together. But now he said, I live to give. Yeah. Now I'm not trying to obey God in giving, I've turned into a giver. In fact, I'm kind of like God. God so loved the world that he gave. It becomes a lifestyle now. It's not a church. It's, it's when the, you, you need to tip somebody with a tip for your luggage and all you've got is a 20. It, it goes past law. Well, I don't have to. Oh, but that's who I am. I'm a giver. And so you give the 20. And you touch a life and you change a life. It's called lifestyle. Yeah. I, I'm trying to talk to you today about let the word become life in your life. Yes. Well, the word's life in my life. How much? Yeah. Uh, how often? Right. Is it life in your life? Well, I believe that. Well, have you done anything with it? Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, you're saved. But I'd rather see you being saved and see some changes in your life. Yes. But what a beautiful thing when you finally come to that point where you make Jesus the Lord of your life. Yeah. Not, not just save me from this and save me, but the Lord of your life. And it becomes the reason you get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. It's for the word to come in and through me to someone else. This is called let the word become life in your life. Three aspects of faith. I better move along because that's just slide number one. All right. I can't believe the rabbi stole my foundation verse. <clears throat> I had it before you said anything this morning. This PowerPoint, these notes were written out long ago. Let's read this. Romans 1, 17. The just shall live by faith. The just shall visit by faith. The, the just shall live by doubt six days a week in faith on Sunday. The, the just shall try to live by faith. The, just, I, the speed limit is 55. Well, it means 61, I think. Yeah, other, uh, others in the house are up to 65. How many, how many believes it's 70, no matter where in the heck you are, you know? Depending on how many times you hit the snooze alarm de determines the speed limit that morning, you know? The just shall live by faith. Romans 1.17, loaded verse, for therein is the righteousness or right standing of God revealed, you can see it, from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Wow. Let me give you some definitions. The word just. It is not just as I am, although that is a real tear jerking song. Just means righteous. Therein is righteousness revealed, the just. Observing divine laws. If, if we don't took, take a look at the Greek and Hebrew, we, we kind of blow past that one. Yeah. Well, I'm just because Jesus died for me. Nah. Observing divine laws. Upright. Keeping the commands of God. Keeping the commands of God. Used of him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of God. Okay, 
I, I don't want a show of hands, but uh, how many's whole way of thinking and, and feeling and acting is wholly conformed to the will of God? Everybody close their eyes and whoever raises their hand will cast the lying devil out of them. You know. No, we all got a ways to go. Amen? And then it says uh, approved. Oh, conform to the will of God. Conform to the will of God. This is, this is a lifestyle here. Approved or acceptable by God, not your weight. Not your scale. The just is only just in God's eyes, not in your eyes or in someone else's eyes. The just shall live by faith. Well, that counts me out then. Well, you can say it the other way. If you live by faith, you're just. Okay, well, if I'm not just, well, then it's because I'm not living by faith. I, I, I mean, I've had some faith moments, but it doesn't say the just have faith moments. It doesn't say the just has faith on Sunday. All right, just. Everybody say just. Okay, that kind of narrows that word down a little bit. Shall live. Oh, man, just get this. To live, to breathe, to enjoy real life. To have the life that is worthy of the name life. To have life that is worthy of the name life. Sometimes people are in a hospital and they're hospice or whatever. That's not life. They're alive, but that's not life. Some people have life in prison, but I don't know if that's life. Beautiful house, two cars, dog, two kids, rebellious, arguing in the marriage, divorce. You can, have, you can gain the whole world and not have life. Life. Real life. The life that is worthy of the name life. Wow. To be active, blessed, and endless in the kingdom of God. Life is endless. Well, see, which life are we living? Are we living this life? The just has this kind of life. The ones living by faith have this kind of life. If I don't have this kind of faith, then I'm not just or I'm not living by faith. To be full of vigor, to be fresh. I mean, I look at people that's alive today and they're half dead, they're tired out, they're they're sagging, bagging, and you name it, you know. Sleepy. Falling asleep at the computer, falling asleep at the wheel, falling at, my goodness. That's not life. I don't know what you think it is. Well, why don't I, why don't I have this vigor? You're either not just or you're not living by faith. Yeah. All right. I, 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 this, this not means to be hard. The point is you can have life. God says you can have this kind of life. Amen. How many would think that I, I want to be honest enough to say, gee, I don't have that. I'd like to trade in what this is for that kind of life. Yes. Yeah. Can happen today. To be fresh, to be strong, to be efficient, to be active, to be powerful. How many live this kind of life? Everybody's got an anxiety problem. They've got a tired problem. The, oh, woe is me problem. That's not the life that God is talking about. And it says here, therein is the righteousness or those that are in right standing with God revealed because they have this kind of life. If you do not have this kind of life, it's revealed that you don't have this kind of life. The just shall live by faith. Not faith. Just 
just conviction of the truth. It's, it's man's relationship to, to God and divine things. God said this, I believe it, that settles it. It's my relation to him about that. I, I, don't, have, I don't have an argument against God because what I found out, he has 8,630 promises that are better than what I have ever come up with in my life. Yeah. Why would I argue with him about that? He's the provider. He's the bestower of eternal salvation. I have faith in that. But my faith is not just, I believe that. I have started living by that faith. I start living as though he's my savior. He's my deliverer, my healer. How did I get there? Well, I heard it. I applied it. I was being, being saved. Yes. And at one point in my life, it dawned on me, why not just give everything of me to him? Because right. every part that I've given to him has, has been better because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The altar call is to give your heart to the Lord today. Right. You've heard that before, but I hope you hear it differently than you've ever heard it before. Okay. Right standing with God is revealed. The just shall live by faith. And it says it's revealed from faith to faith. We have faith moments. Sure. Every day you will have several faith moments. In these faith moments, you are either going to trust and act on God's word or you will not in that moment determines whether you're going to move to another level of faith or you're going to stay at the same level of faith. So every time we have a faith moment, there's, there's a test. A test reveals where your faith is. Every moment is a test to let the word become life in your life in that moment aspect. We, we, life does not change because we believe God is seated at the right hand of the Father and he's praying for us. Our life has changed when we have a test right here, right now, and we have to let the word become life in our life in this situation. Yeah. And in this situation, are you with me? If I put my trust in God, I apply it, and I start living as though it's true, my faith increases. Yeah. Okay. Check, I got that figured out. Next time sickness comes, I know what to do about that one. Yeah. Right. Next time a bill comes in the mail, I know what to do about that one. Yeah. Tear up Reverend Connie's credit card. That's what I know how to do about that one. <laughs> this is the moment. A faith moment is when you can add faith to your life. And that will reveal, what? Righteousness. Yes. That will cause the God kind of life to come into that area right there. Are you getting anything out of this? All right, here's another verse. That's got, okay. Uh, Hebrews 10.38. It's not a one-time verse in there. You'll, you'll see it in several scriptures. Hebrews 10.38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back... Okay, so in the faith moment, you're either going to live by faith or you're going to go back to, revert to, something else that you've believed. Okay. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure. In other words, I, I, I see someone, you, you know, get going for the Lord and then they have a test and then they go back. My soul doesn't have any pleasure in that. And that's so sad. You were doing so good. Who did bewitch you? Yeah. Having begun of the spirit, why did you quit? Wow. They draw back. My pleasure. But God doesn't have any pleasure in that. He wants you to keep going. Deacon eat. don't throw in the towel. Yeah. Right. Keep fighting. This is a fight we can win. Yeah. Yes? Yes. But if we, but we are not of them who draw back. Yes. I'm not. 
I hope you're with me on that. I'm not going to draw back. Why am I going to go back to that stuff? I mean, it wasn't working. Why go back to it? I want to move forward. Yes? All right. <clears throat> if you got out of the seven mountain, why do you want to draw back into one of them? Throw me that t-shirt real quick. <laughs> nice shot. Nice shot. These were our baptism t-shirts. I left it in the water. My soul has no pleasure when you dive back in to get it. The scripture, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Yeah. I left it in the water. How much did you leave in the water? I, th I see there's a scum on the water, but I, I don't know. I've baptized some people in my day, and I realized I should have held them under longer. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> What'd you leave in the water? Why'd you get, why do you draw back? Yeah. I mean, after you finally understand the family of God is your real family, why are you going to go back to a family mountain thing? Yeah. Why are you going to go back? Yeah. My soul has no pleasure in that. God doesn't have any pleasure in that. And that's not life and that's not just. Yes. And it's very obvious when you do it. It's obvious when you go back to the mountain. Yeah. Everybody can see it. Except you, I guess. Yeah. But God can. Yeah. Now, it says draw back unto perdition. You know, perdition, that's one of those words. Well, I'm not drawing back to hell. Perdition just means not pass the test. Yeah. Uh, right. okay. that's good. That's good. Huh. Yeah. Didn't pass the test. You didn't use your faith moment. You didn't use your faith moment to grow. Don't draw back into perdition. Be being saved. Don't go back to something that you got delivered from. I've watched people stand at the altar and just commit their life to the Lord. And then pretty soon, my God, they're, they're farther in one of those seven mountains than they were before they came to the altar. That's perdition. That's failing the test. Failing the test. Do not graduate. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not get this God kind of life. You have your reward in that seven mountain. That's it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Because it's gone and you didn't increase your faith. You just went backwards. That's all. Thank you, Bishop, for telling me that. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2.4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. See, what's the problem? It's the soul. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I went back to that mountain. Uh, let me tell you, it's your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's my flesh. No, it's your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your soul is lifted up. What's your soul? Your mind. Another thought popped up and you believe that instead of God. Well, I want to do it. Well, then your will rose up against the will of God. But I get so much joy out of it. Well, good for you. Don't worry about the joy of the Lord. You just traded in the joy of the Lord for the joy of a natural thing. Yeah. What is your soul busy with self? Well, I was just too busy. How many of you were too busy this week to let the word become life in your life? I mean, I, I, mean, I had stuff to do. I mean, dear God, Bishop, don't you understand I work? Well, you're going to work without faith? Well, I have to raise children. Well, you can raise them without faith? 
Well, I have to make money. You're going to do that without faith? Fill in the blank. Why are you going to do anything without faith? See, here's our mindset. Well, how much do you need? How much do you want, God? I've already given you my Sunday. I've given you 10% of my money. I've given my Fridays away to you. A half an hour. I've given my Fridays away to you. What else do you want? It's not, it's not that. That's the wrong question. God is saying, well, what do you want? It's about your soul, not not God's. Well, what do you want, God? God says, I want, the, I want you to have the God kind of life is what I want. But as long as your mind, will, and emotions are not renewed or saved, yeah. you're not going to ever experience it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The just shall do what? Live by faith. That means raising children. That means working. Yeah. That means driving. That means on your computer, that means, my Lord, it just means all day long. Yeah. Every, every moment's a faith moment. If you work on a commuter, computer, every moment's a faith moment. Oh, sure. <laughs> I understand. Dealing with demons, demon drivers, demon drivers, or whatever they're called. How many understands what I'm trying to say here? What's the problem that you don't live by faith? Well, my, it's my mind, it's my will, it's my emotions. I'm just busy. Dear God, I'm trying to fit God in. Yeah. You're trying to fit God in as if you're doing him a favor. Your life belongs to him. If you ever gave your life to him, you'd have him 24-7 and 8,630 blessings would be in your life and you would have the God kind of life and you would think it was stupid that you spent that many years trying to do your thing. Yeah. Yes, your mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is lifted up. It's, it's, it's exalted above God's will and his word. Why don't I live by faith? Because, well, I got a better way, God. Or I want to do this. I don't want to do this today. This is what I want to do today. I want to get my hair done today. Well, you can take, you're not going to take God with you? Do, you? do you understand? With all those ladies in that same room, you need God. Especially if you're a man sitting there waiting. With all the different colors to choose from, from all the different styles to choose from, you need God to help you make those choices. You're not paying attention. Exalted above God's will and his word. Well, I, I, can't, I can't do any more, God. You, you, you're just asking too much. Well, watch him step away. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. When you get tired of your life, I'll still be here showing you how to get the God kind of life. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good message, isn't it? Yeah. Your soul is lifted up, upright. You're not in right standing with God. Do you understand when you are not letting God become life in your life. You're, the word is not life in your life, in every day of your life. You're not in right standing with God. Yeah. I mean, call it, it, tell me it's something different. I, 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 I can't do your word right now. Well, then you, you've turned your back to him yeah. and you're doing your word. Yeah. Yes? I only have three pages. We're done with page one. Did you get anything out of this so far? Yes, are you still happy? Do you understand that God is a good God all the time? The devil is bad all the time. I'm a little bit in between, all right? But I'm leaning towards I'm good all the time. This is a good message. It will help you grow in faith. 
If you catch the heart of this, you will be being saved to the point you will experience the God kind of life. How many wants to experience that? Yes. Have no idea where I am. Okay, here's this next verse. <clears throat> Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Now that's not preached from the pulpits today. I am, do you know what cru crucifixion does to you? It kills you. Paul said, I'm dead. Well, that's not a way to get life. Not in the world, it's not. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm dead, but no, wait, I live. I'm crucified with Christ. No, wait, I live. <clears throat> not I. So who died? I, I died, but I, the new creature in Christ Jesus, live. But Christ liveth in me, and the life, oh, different than the one I was living. The life which I now live in the flesh, you're still in the flesh. I mean, you don't quit living. You don't quit existing. Right, yeah. I mean, you don't quit going to work. You don't quit going to school. You don't quit going shopping. You don't quit go, hello? Yeah. I mean, you still have life. Yeah. Go soak your head in the ocean. Hey, Amen, go out to eat. I mean, I didn't quit life when I gave my heart to the Lord. Right. Right. It's just, it was a new life. Yeah. A new purpose. A new step. The life that I now live, I live by faith. You see it? I live by faith. <clears throat> you, you don't really experience this life until you live this life. You see, if we only visit this life for a couple hours on Sunday, we, we, we don't really get it. We, you know, we just don't really get it. Paul is saying something here very powerful, right? He, this is good news. He's saying good news. This is not bad news. Oh, I, got, I had to die to be a Christian. I had to die. Lay down my life for the Lord. You don't know the trouble I've seen. Well, I've seen trouble before I gave my heart to the Lord. I didn't have an answer then. Yeah. I've, I've seen trouble since I know the Lord, but I, he always gives me an answer, a, a solution. Rise above it, get through it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a few amens once in a while could keep me going and we can get amen. through this. Yeah. I, I, the, the, the life that I now live is I live by faith. So, word of faith, I hear it, I believe it. Law of faith, I start applying it. I'm saved, now I'm being saved. More of my life is saved than it was. Yeah. But Paul is saying, once I got crucified, once I finally died to the old life, it, it, listen, instead of adding God to my life, I finally got rid of my old life. Okay. Yeah. This is not about a percentage thing anymore. God, I, I gave you 10%. You want more? Okay, I'll give you 20%. I mean, dear God, you're strangling me. You're choking me. Okay, I'll give you some more. Now you got me all tied up. But boy, I'm feeling pretty good. God's got 50% of my life. Now you think about it. You look around, you see how many Christians God's got 50% of their life. Oh yeah, you're probably in the top 10. That doesn't mean you have life yet. Yeah. You're still trying to put God into your life. How many would be honest and sit here and say, you know, that's probably what I've been doing. I've been trying to put God in my life. Yeah. Been praying, I, need, I need more of you. We sing it, more of you, less of me. Well, that's step number two. Yeah. That's being saved when we sing that song. Yeah. 
We have a song for everybody. Are you with me? Because not all, not everybody's at the same place here. It's okay if you're at one of these places. If you haven't had heard the word yet, you're not saved. You're not being saved, and you will never be saved. You have to hear the word. So. I live by the faith of God. Now, here's an interesting verse. Whosoever will save his life will lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. In this being saved period of our life, we feel like we're losing our life. I am losing my friends. I'm, I'm losing some of those good times. I'm losing some of my family members. They, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing. Well, just lose it. Get over being a loser. Start looking about being a finder. Yeah. Whoever, whoever tries to hang on to their life, they will lose it. You will lose every moment of faith. You will lose every moment in your life for the life of God to flow through you. Every time you hold on to your life, you lost that for eternity. I don't care how much fun you had. I don't care how much enjoyment it was. I don't care how many, you know, fluffy, fuzzy feelings you felt in it. You lost it in eternity. When you stand before God, the scales are going to be very clear. You you did that for yourself. Don't I get any credit for that? No, you did that for yourself. In fact, many times you went to church just to show how spiritual you were. You did that for yourself. You didn't come to worship me. You didn't come to serve me. You came to show off your spirituality. Thou hypocrite. The greatest among you is the servant of all. Lose your life. See, when you lose your life, you're not insecure. You're not trying to prove yourself. You're not trying to compete. You're not trying to be the top dog. You're just thankful that God wants to use you today to do anything. Pick up a piece of paper, clean the floor, paint the walls, clean the toilet, preach. It doesn't matter because you've learned to live by faith. It doesn't matter if I'm taking the trash out or doing the laundry or blowing out the driveway. I think I heard this morning that the reason she wants me not out in the driveway is there's laundry to do. (laughs) There's always, you know... You understand, Nate, there's five levels to understanding when you read the scripture. Yeah, you hear one thing, but you, there's something else under there, you know. <laughs> Don't go out in the cold. I got work to be done in the house. If you will ever just lose your life, you'll find it. You'll find it. The struggle of, well, how much do you want God? Just give it all to him and you'll find out that was the best thing that you could have ever done in your life. Amen. All right. Living by faith is not. You know, sometimes you need to find out what it's not to find out what it is, correct? So living by faith is not expecting all the promises of God to just drop out of the sky and happen because you believe it. Well, I believe God's my healer. How's that working out for you? Well, I'm just believing for healing. Have you got it yet? Well, God's just going to take care of me. Well, then you must be a poor person. Because the one living by faith, making the money that's given you the money is the one that's living by faith. Well, God has taken care of me. Yeah, he takes care of a bird. So what, you know, your top bird or something? Well, the government takes care of me. Well, it's not God. That was a man set up program. God's got a better way. I say God has a better way than that. 
I'm just waiting on God. No, the truth is God's waiting for you. Yeah. It's three aspects of faith. I hear the word and then I do something. Yes. Expecting money to fall out of the sky. It doesn't. Right. If you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. God blesses what you put your hand to. Yeah. God gave you the power to get wealth. He didn't give you wealth. Right. Yeah. That's right. yes. Living by faith is not just, well, I'm just trusting God. That's religion. BAM International and all their bills are paid. Yeah. Reverend Connie was not in the office writing checks for two, three weeks. 25 days. But the bills were paid. Look around. There must be multimillionaires in the building. No, there must be some people that are blessed in this building. Because nearly everyone here is a tither. So they are blessed. Which causes the blessing on the whole house. There are churches. What, what, Reverend Connie was talking to a guy the other day. He says, dear God, you know, an ice storm coming. We got to have church. We'll never be able to make it another week without the offering. <sighs> Please. This is not faith. This has nothing to do with faith. This has nothing to do with God taking care of you or not taking care of you. It has to do with people being taught the word and individuals being blessed causes a corporate group to be blessed. Yeah, right. It's three aspects. Living by faith is not, you know, you're going to write an appeal letter or you're going to tell somebody I, I, <clears throat> who has something that you want. I'm just believing God for one of those. That, <laughs> slap them and say, well, quit believing God and start sowing for it then. Right. Yeah. Preachers. Huh, you got me started now. Send me, send me a thousand dollar offering and God will bless you. A hundredfold return. I just want to write back and say, this is my address. This is make the check payable too. Yes, sir. Because if, if what you're saying is true, then send me a check. Yes. Right. Because if you send me a check, actually, math wise, you'll get more than me sending you a check. Yes. <laughs> don't, don't. Don't be deceived by all the religious rhetoric out there. Yeah. Yeah. Saved, being saved, will be saved. Living by faith does not mean you're in full-time ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Living by faith can be someone who has a secular job, who is not in ministry of any other aspect other than just the ministry of helps. Minister of Reconciliation, winning somebody to the Lord out there at the workplace. Yeah. Living by faith is for everybody. Who can do it? Everybody. Whoever decides to let the word become life in their life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I was full-time minister, I could live by faith. If you don't learn to live by faith before you're in the ministry, I guarantee you 100%, maybe 110%, you will never live by faith in the ministry. Because right. now you not only have your problems, you have everybody else's problems. You can't figure out how to solve your own. Faith without works and corresponding action is dead. James, uh, something here, 2.18. Faith without works is dead. Yes? I have faith. Yeah, okay. Well, show me your faith by doing something. Well, I'm believing for healing. Then I'd like to see you eat right according to Leviticus chapter 23. I'd like to see you call on the elders of the church and have them pray for you. Yeah. I'd like to see believers lay hands on you and they'll recover. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see two or more touching anything agreeing. It shall be done. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see you doing something what God said about healing. I'm believing for healing. We'll do what God said about healing. Because you're not believing for healing. You're believing what God said about something. Yes. Yes. And you will have faith moments for each and every 
area of your life. So living by faith is. What's living by faith? Well, it's the three steps, the word. I have to hear. I have to hear what God says about this thing I'm dealing with today. Well, God loves me. It's not going to solve every problem in your life. You know, Reverend Bob says he is. Well, it, it, that's not going to solve it unless you know what he is today. That's it. Right. Yeah. Well, he is. Yeah, I know that. But I'm sick. Well, then he has to be your healer yeah, today. That's it. He has to be your provider today. Well, God is. I just trust him. No, no, you have to, you have to trust him for that thing yeah, today. Right. And that's a faith moment. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, God knows my problem. Well, sure he does. He knew it before you got into it and was probably trying to uh, have a preacher preach the answer to you, but you, you didn't go to church that day to hear it. Right. We have to hear it. Everybody say hear it. Then we have to believe it. We have to receive it. The next thing is law, the obedience of that word. Now we have to do what that word said. Living by faith. I'm talking about living by faith. Can anybody do it? Yeah, anybody can do this. Yeah. Obedience to the word. Pick one. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Well, then I guess I better go to church today. Yeah. Oh, they scheduled a work day. Well, I guess I better go then. Oh, that, that excludes me. Okay, well, don't live by faith today. Live by mind, will, and emotions. I got something better to do. Yeah. I, I'm not picking on anybody. <laughs> hey, yeah. Liam prayed this morning. He says, Bishop's a great man of God, and we want to hear how he went through all these things. I'm telling you how I went through all these things. God said, lay your guitar down. It didn't crucify me, but it darn near did. Quit the band, secular band, reception band. That one pretty near killed me. That was a source of income. Here's a big one. Quit selling drugs. Jesus, that was my biggest source of income. Well, I suppose, you know, I tried to justify it. You know, I'm only going 61 in a 55. <laughs> you know, the struggle with the soul. Well, it's, 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 uh, I got a scripture for it, Nate. It's a weed bearing seed wow. for the service of man. I'm only using it. I'm not abusing it. Come on. You can give me all your excuses. I've already tried them. I've already tried these excuses and God just smiles and says, you'll get it, son. You'll get it sooner or later. And then when you lose it, then a, another high comes, another joy comes. And you think, what in the world was I doing with that? I told one gal that didn't want to give up her pot and some religious guys was arguing with her. And I said, listen, why would you want to get high when you can have the most high? That's it. And she thought, well, now well, that makes sense. And you get to keep your teeth. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not telling you to give up something that God isn't going to give you something better. Yeah. Yeah. That's the point. But the, the thing is, if you don't give it up, there's no room for the God kind of life. Yeah. Living by faith is obedience to the word of God. We have to do what he says. Yes. We, we may not understand it. I mean, why do you want me to put my guitar down? That's my worship instrument. That's how I worship God. Have you ever heard me sing? You would rather me play guitar. It sounds better. That was, I can't worship you without this. No, let me teach you, son. You can't take that guitar with you every day down the road, driving down the road. Yeah. I want you to, I want to teach you how to be a worshiper. Yeah. Not a Worship person once a week or when you have your guitar. Yeah. 
You better worship me when you're driving down the road and a deer ahead and there's an accident ahead. Now I want to teach you a lifestyle of worship. And then the law of the Spirit. Living is living by the Spirit. I mean, trusting God for every area of your life. How many has trusted him for some of the areas of your life and he pulled through for you? Amen. He's faithful. Yes. He's just. He watches over his word to perform yes. it. Why would you not trust him for one more thing? Yes. Living by faith is just deciding, well, today, I'm just, I'm going to have faith moments all day long anyway. Yes. So I think what I'm going to do is every time I have one of those moments, I'm going to trust God on this. What do you say about this? You may not know what he says about that. That's it. Right. Yes, sir. Well, I just ran into some stupid people. Well, you're going to have to find out what God says about stupid people. Jesus could do no money works in an area except he healed a few sick folk. And you go to the Greek and it says morons. Yes, sir. The only ones he could heal were the morons. Because they couldn't think how to doubt God. Right. Yes, sir. Wow. Well, I just ran into a stupid person. Well, get them healed then. Yeah. Yeah. Get them delivered. Get them saved. They probably don't have any reasons why they don't want to make the Lord the Lord of their life. Yeah. Right. Soul wasn't lifted up. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you don't flow in compassion, you are not in a position for God to use you. As soon as you exalt yourself and you think you know more than somebody else, you just eliminated a faith moment for God to use you. Because yes. he can't use your pride. Right. That's the other guy. Yes, sir. Lucifer. Living by faith is trusting God for every area of your life. Man, what an exciting journey. Yes, it's an adventure. I mean, do you understand? Well, what am I giving up? Look what you're, look what you just opened yourself up for. Yeah, you, yeah. An adventure. you opened yourself up for Red Seas, parting Jordan yeah. Rivers, yeah, yeah. looking for quail to fall out of the sky. You're looking for signs, wonders, and miracles. I mean, anything could happen any day. Yeah. But if you hold on to your life, I guarantee it's going to be the same old, same old. Uh, yeah. Nothing's going to change. Living by faith. How many wants to give it a shot? Yes. All right. Faith can be seen. Familiar verse. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word what? The word was God. The word was God. God is the word. God and his word are inseparable. God and his word are one. God only says what he means and means what he says. And God said, and the worlds came into existence. The Word. Everybody say the word. the word. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. Now a lot of people say, well, this is Jesus. It doesn't say that. It says the Word. Yes, yeah. Well, a preacher told me that was Jesus. Jesus is a five foot nine Jewish man. Uh, has a fleshly body. A body thou hast prepared for me. Yes. What was the thing that was important about it? God was in that body. The body was not God. Yeah. If that body was God, the body wouldn't have died yeah. or bled. Right. 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 Yes? Yeah. No, it's the word that was in that body. Yeah. Everybody say the word. the word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Dwelt, lived. Yeah. 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 The word lived out the life of faith in front of us. I saw a life of faith in front of me. Help me out here. You seen it? Yeah. And we beheld. We saw it. We saw what? Life. A life of faith. Yeah. Amen. Oh, we saw Jesus. If I could see Jesus. A lot of people saw Jesus and didn't see Jesus. Yeah. A lot of people saw the carpenter's son. A lot of people saw, well, that's just Mary's boy. Uh, a lot of people just saw, well, that's that illegitimate child that, you know, I heard that. What, you... yeah. Hello? Yeah. 
well, I, he's from Nazareth, nothing good comes out of Nazareth. No, if you're looking at a fleshly body, the Bible actually says that there was his countenance or his, his makeup was not even, he wasn't handsome like the pictures portray him. Comely, it says. He wasn't comely. Not handsome like Liam, for example. It wasn't that that they saw. They, they saw the word in action, in flesh, in a life demonstrating. Can I say it this way? The word became life in his life. And that is what changes people. The world still needs to see a life of faith. And we, and we saw the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of what? Grace and truth. Grace. Yes. You're saved by grace. The first commandment is grace. Yes. All the commandments of grace. Don't commit adultery because the next one is don't commit murder. Right. Don't steal. You'll be behind bars. It's just, they're all grace. I'm trying to save you from something. But Jesus was a vessel born as a man yes. who let God's word become life in his life. Amen. How do I know that? Because he said, not my will, but thine be done. What was he doing? He was being saved. Yes. He was deciding his mind, will, and emotions was not going to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. God says you need to go to a cross, you need to shed your blood, you need to die. Ooh, just checking in, is there another way? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Did I hear that correctly? Are you with me? Did I hear that correctly? Yes, that's what you have to do. Not my will, but thine be done. He was crucified in the garden long before he got crucified on that cross. It said drops of blood came out of his head. Dealing with the fact that he had to give his life. Well, maybe you feel that way. I don't know if you know this or not, but he's alive today. And he's king of kings and lord of lords. There is no higher spot next to God the Father than, than, than he. That's an example. If you lay down your life for him, God's got a place yeah. in my Father's house as many positions of authority. I got a spot just for you. But you're going to have to lay down something. Yes. The word was made flesh and dwelling among us. We, we need to see another word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. I would hope that you see the word in this flesh dwelling among you, yes. declaring what God is saying. I try to do what God is doing. Amen. We have to see a demonstration of it. I grew up in a church and I didn't see the word life in people's lives. Yeah. But when you see the word alive in somebody, when my dad got saved and started going to church, I. <clears throat> it wasn't because of my daddy I started going to church. It's because my daddy never went to church and now he started going to church. His faith, I could see by his works. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I saw faith. Yeah. I saw a change. The world needs to see something. All right, faith can be seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I think we missed this point. Faith is substance. Yes. Faith is evidence. Yes. We, we think hearing the word of faith is faith. That's, that's only step one. The faith in that aspect is 
I'm thinking about the things hoped for. If you're hoping for it, you don't have it yet. But faith is the way for that to come to you. But that doesn't mean it's come to you yet. Faith is when it does come to you. Faith is substance. Everybody say substance. Faith is evidence of things not seen. Faith is not just talk, but demonstration. Jesus didn't talk faith. He demonstrated faith. He said, God's the God that healeth thee, and then he demonstrated it. He didn't pray for people at the altar, and I hope to God in six months you recover. He prayed for a blind person, and their eyes opened. That's substance. Do you understand the difference between hope and substance? If I'm trying to get healed, I have hope. If, I'm, I, if I am healed, I'm not even talking about it. Yeah. Oh. It's not even an issue. Yeah. I, I mean, if you have two cars in the garage, you don't talk about, boy, I'm just, I'm just believing God for a car. You have to. Right. You're not talking about it. It's not a battle. It's not, it's not a struggle. You already have that. Faith is having substance and evidence and proof. Living by faith is proof, evidence. Yes. Not just talk. Well, I'm living by faith. You don't have to tell me. In fact, the more you try to tell me you're living by faith, the more I know you're not. Because while you're trying to convince me you're living by faith, you're not demonstrating it. Bishop, I believed God for this the other day. Well, where is it? Right. I mean, bring it to me. Well, I witnessed to this person the other day. Are, are they here today? Right. Well, I guess it wasn't that good a witness. Yeah. You wouldn't believe the wisdom that God gave me for this person. I mean, I just preached to him for an hour and a half. Are they here today? Right. Well, you didn't win them. Stop talking faith. Yeah. Start doing faith. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see it. Yes, sir. Boy, I just want to be in the ministry of helps. <laughs> well, I, I know. <clears throat> and we saw Nate, and we saw Amanda, and we saw Melissa, and we saw it sure. for like hours. Everybody say hours. Well, I was there for 15 minutes. We, we, we saw your moment of faith. We, people will try to impress you with their words. At least years ago, there was an advertisement, show me the meat. Just show me the meat. I went through this restaurant not too long. We've been to this same restaurant in Dakota. We'll know how many times we've been there for that crazy place. Hardly ever went, never went there in years, you know, and then all of a sudden we're going through the drive-thru, you know. But on the, on the billboard, they got this picture of this big, massive, Mackey, magnificent, large, huge burger. And I don't know, when I got it home and opened up that little curtain, I thought, show me the, show me the big. Right. Must have had the heat on in your car. <laughs> Some freeze-dried happened or something. I, I don't know what happened with that. Talk is big. I'm going to win the world. Win one. God's called me an evangelist to the world. Have you brought anyone to church? You're not Billy Green quality yet, all right? 
show me. Just show me. You know what? If you show me, you won't have to tell me. Yeah. In fact, everybody will know. This, I, I'm just saying it's available. How yes, I many wants, wants to tap into it? How, how do we tap into it? Well, we hear what God says about something today. And then what? Well, then we do what he says about that something. And then what happens? This turns into a lifestyle. You get addicted to this. Yes? yes. Are you getting mad at me now? or Substance. Faith can be seen. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a what? A witness, a testimony, a demonstration. It's not just preaching, it's demonstration. Has it made it around the world as a demonstration yet, as a witness yet, as a testimony yet? Different translations say witness, other ones say testimony, others say demonstration. I tried to put them all in there. But the word witness, uh, it's a, it's a uh, Hebrew word here. I think I wrote it down. Um... Maturion, something evident, demonstration. Something evident. Witness, it's evident. You're not trying to convince me, it's evident. Yeah, can you be convicted by it? If it's evident, you don't have to convince me. Yeah. The gospel of the kingdom is more than talk or words. It must be seen. The gospel of the kingdom must be seen. Your life preaches what you believe. I don't, I don't care how much gospel you have, your life preaches what you believe. When you're going 61, your life just preached what you believe. Yeah. You can tell me all day the speed limit's 55. You can tell me all day, all day that you want to be a law-abiding citizen. But when you're going 61, you are a lawbreaker. Yes, but it's within, it's within, no, it's within thou had sin. Confess thy sin and God will forgive you of sin and cleanse you from all speeding in the future. Your life preaches what you believe. Your life is louder than words. Well, your life is louder than words. How did we grow up with this? Do as I say, not as I do. Well, how's that worked out for the next generation that came along? No, they grew up doing as you do. With lesser of a standard. And then the next generation grows up with do as you do, only a lesser standard. What you say should be what you do. Has the world seen a real born again child of the kingdom? Or have we seen part-time Christians who have added God to parts of their life? Okay. Faith can be seen. Yeah, a man may say that you have faith and I have works. Well, show me your faith. I mean, James just makes it clear. Well, show me your faith. I will show you my faith by my works. Well, we don't have to do works. No, you don't. But you're never going to experience the life of God and living by faith either. So stop your nonsense. It, I don't have to do the law. We'll stay at number one step. Three aspects of faith. I heard what God said. I can tell someone else what God said. You're not doing it, so I, I don't care. There's no evidence in your life. Do something. Yeah. Do something. I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there's only one God. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Well, I believe God. The devils figured that out when they got kicked out of heaven. Right. Listen, all of those, third of the angels that got kicked out of heaven still believe in God. Yes, sir. Yeah. But they are not in heaven. Just because you believe in God doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Thank you for your enthusiasm. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Why have faith? 
If you're not doing something with your faith, yeah. it's dead. Faith can be seen. You know the famous story. I think Pastor Aaron did a great job at that. These guys take this man sick of the palsy to the meeting. They can't get in the door. They take him up on his bed on the roof, tear the roof off the building. They let him down through the roof. Behold, they brought to him a sick man of the palsy laying on a bed. And Jesus, what? I don't know if they said, Lord, Lord Jesus, heal this man. I don't know if they had an uplifted hand with a silent prayer request. I don't know if there was anything spoken whatsoever. Jesus didn't have to hear them say anything. There's two or more of us here together and we're touching this man and we know that he's going to be healed. He, he's not listening to all the faith confessions. He saw them tear the roof apart and let the man down through the roof. He saw their what? He saw their faith. He saw their faith. And he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Of course, the Pharisees got mad about that. And so then Jesus says, well, what's easier? Forgive him of his sins for tearing the roof apart? That's it. <laughs> or take up your bed and walk. Yeah. No, these are all men of faith over here. We know the word. We know the word. Jesus says, I'll show you the word. You know the word, but I'm going to show you the word. They showed me the word they believed. I saw their faith. Now, I will show you my faith. Take up your bed and walk yeah. and go home. Faith has to be seen. Faith can be seen. If it's not seen, it's dead. It's dead. Faith can be perceived. Now, Paul, he's preaching along, and there was this man that kept looking at him, and, uh, and, and Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. We as preachers, I threw this in for you preachers. You ought to know when someone has faith to be healed or not. Yes, sir. I mean, when, when people come to the altar, I know if they have faith to be healed or not or if I'm going to have to talk to them for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Are they ready? I mean, if Liam comes up, shoot, you know, one tap on the forehead and he's gone. Do you understand God's trying to tell you that he wants you healed all the time? Do you, I mean, you can live a life of healing. You don't have to wait for Bishop to have a word of knowledge because your parents do not protect you at home somehow for some reason. I don't, I don't know what the story is, you know, but, you know, you just get into all sorts, sorts of things. But I, I got home, you, you know, was it Wednesday night? And I said, oh, man, I, I kept joking around about, my God, where's Pastor Aaron and Melissa? This kid's in trouble all the time, you know? And, um, and, I, and I got home and I said, you know, I believe, I, asked, I said, what's the Lord trying to do with Liam? And God said, I want to teach him a lifestyle of healing. I want him to t teach him how to live in divine health. Amen. I'm showing him right now that every time he has a problem, no matter how, how simple, how little, how insignificant, that God uses a word of knowledge to speak to me, to bring to him. The end of the story is, Liam, anytime you have a problem, you know it's the will of God for you to be healed. You just stand and receive it. Yes. And be a demonstration of what a healed man does Amen. his entire life. God is trying to bring this into lifestyle. Amen. Can you perceive or see when others have faith? The flip side is, can you see when they don't? A person asked me one time, will you pray for my mom? I said, no. Why not? Well, she won't get healed. She doesn't have any faith to be healed. And she'll blame me why it didn't happen. Tell her to read these verses. Study these verses. After you've studied those verses, then I'll come and pray. You have to have, you can perceive when people have faith and when they don't. Yeah. Can faith be seen in your life? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself. Don't worry about examining everybody else. Examine yourself whether you are in the faith. And examine yourself how many times you're in the faith. Examine yourself how many times you're in the doubt. How many times you're in the, I don't want to do it today. 
I'm just too tired to do it today. Prove your own selves. Examine yourself. How many things that's a smart thing to do? Yes. The lifestyle of faith is what people need to see. Faith is seen in the test. Don't count it all joy when you fall into yes. different temptations. Why? Because it's a moment. Yes. It's a moment to do what? To decide to live in faith. Yes. Well, what if I die? Absent in the body, present with the Lord. You win no matter how this works out. Examine yourself. Does your life have evidence that can be seen? That's the point today. Can anyone see your faith? Well, I tell them all day long, I have faith. Can they see it? They don't have to see a lot. Let them just see my mom. She'd, she'd have an ache or pain. And she'd come over and she'd say, I'm going to church and I'm going to get healed. About halfway through praise and worship, there she was over in the corner. Woo! And she'd be healed. Then she'd go back home, stick a knife in the casing of the door because she's afraid somebody was going to break in. She believed and demonstrated her faith in healing. The knife in the casing in the door believed and demonstrated her faith in fear of someone breaking in. There's no sense of you trying to preach what you don't believe. Just, just live what you believe, and that itself will preach. Can someone see your faith? Well, I think you understand that's the message we preach around here. Let the word become life in your life. It's a process. We're going to sing one song as we leave, or two songs, or whatever. But today, there's no condemnation. Are you with me? Well, what if I'm not living by faith? Well, then you ought to be hearing faith at least today. How many at least heard faith today? Well, that's step number one. Check. Praise God. Step number two. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act on it. I'm going to act on it this week. I mean, I never did the tithing thing. Well, I'm, I'm going to work on that one. Are you with me? Yeah. Well, I'm going to work on that healing thing. I'm going to look at some more verses on that. I'm, I'm going to look at just one to a time. Enjoy the journey. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's got a few things checked off. I got my Sunday thing. I got the Wednesday thing. I got the Sabbath thing. Gosh, two, two hours a month on the prayer call on Thursday night. Man. Look how much of my life I'm giving to the Lord. Try a little more this week, and you will find a little more of the life of God in your life this week. Say, well, I've never really made Jesus the Lord of my life. I've been adding him to my life. This altar is open at any moment. I tell the story. I was at the beach. I knelt down, and I made him the Lord of my life. From that day, my whole life changed. Everything passed away. All things became new. Every day was a journey with God, an experience with God. Did I want to draw back a few times, Liam? Yeah. I chose not to. I may have had a couple pity days. No one came to my party, but, you know, I threw a pity party. I may have thrown a few pity parties over the years, you know. Yeah, they're just boring anyway. They're depressing. I pick myself up and get going again. If you've wanted to throw in the towel, pick up your towel, wipe the sweat off your face, and start swinging again. Amen. Gee, any thought out of this today? This is my prayer that this word will become life in your life. Amen.